welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. I am Coach Julia and today we are tackling part two of a big sewing project I've got going on. I am making the short program costume for Coach Paolo from our rink, Paolo Borromeo. He is going to be competing at the Philippine National Championships in two and a half weeks now and has asked me to make that costume. And so we are gonna be making this amazing costume. I talked about the design process of this yesterday and I'll post a link down below in case you wanna watch part one of this series. But today we're tackling the pants. This is the part of the process that I think is gonna be the simplest. So I'm trying to get it out of the way first so I can just uh, you know, have that part out of my mind and really focus tomorrow on this tunic, which is gonna be quite complex. So part one is gonna be the pants. So we have this black stretch velvet. Okay, you always, I have a thing about costumes. I want them to be fully stretchy. And so all the material I've gotten for this is four-way stretch. So there is a slight better stretch one way than the other way. And so I'm gonna make sure that the stretch goes widthwise rather than lengthwise. I can make the pants whatever length I need to make them, but we want that width so when he's moving around, he has the flexibility uh, crosswise, all right? So his legs, muscles flex, so we want that stretch there so he doesn't rip his pants seams. And then we have our pattern, which I have made out of this grid material. So this is what I always make my patterns out of, is this, it has a one inch grid. So this right now is just three pieces. I have the pant front, the pant back, a faux fly, and then there will be a waistband, but I'm just gonna wait till it's all done and make some measurements of the pants and cut the waistband based on that. So this is what we're working with this and the black velvet. So we're gonna get started on this right now. Let's go over the materials we're gonna use to make these pants. So of course, we're starting out with that stretch black velvet. And then we have our pattern. Again, I showed you it was the, two, the front piece, the back piece, and the faux fly. We'll make the waistband later. We're gonna need the measuring tape to double check our measurements and for the waistband. Of course, we have our scissors. And then we're gonna have two inch wide elastic that we're gonna use to encase for the waistband. And we have three quarter inch wide elastic for loops that are gonna hold the pants down under the skates and some great big snaps for those same loops underneath the skates and my handy dandy pins. All right, so that is all of our materials. Let's get started with cutting this out. So velvet has a different sheen if you look one way at it from the other. So one way it's really dark and rich and the other way it is silvery. So I always wanna double check the direction of the nap. It's called the nap on velvets to make sure it's the way I want it. And I like it to look really dark, really rich. So I'm double checking the way that velvet hangs so I can make sure I'm cutting it all out the, the way I want it. And so once I found that, I'm gonna mark it with a little pin so that I can fold it with that pin in mind. And then we can just go ahead and lay all the pattern pieces down to make sure that they're really straight on the fabric and then we can go ahead and just cut them out. So now we have all those pattern pieces cut out. We're gonna start with the fly in the front. We only need one of these so it's not a double piece like the pants are I cut out in layers of two. So for the fly, it's just a single. The first thing we're gonna do is actually edge the curved side of the fly. So I'm gonna take this little fly over to my serger so I can run a serging stitch along this curved edge. It's a really simple process. I always try to be careful though with a stretch material. I don't wanna stretch it out as I'm sewing. Otherwise it gets a little bit of a ruffly look and that is not a nice, clean, professional finish that I want for this project. Now we're gonna get started on the front of the pants. Let's take that little fly piece and what we're gonna do is we're going to set it on the wrong side of the fabric. So we're flipping the fabric over to that shiny non-velvet side and we are gonna set that down wrong sides together and then we're gonna go ahead and stitch them around in a fly shape. This isn't a functional like zippered front of the pants, but it's gonna give the look that we're accustomed to in pants and that's really all we're doing. We're creating a 
the illusion of a fly on the front so that it just looks like what we're used to on pants. So we got that pinned on. I'm gonna take it over to my traditional machine and we're gonna stitch this down. For this stitch, I am gonna use what's called a lightning stitch. The lightning stitch is still stretchy, but it's like a tiny, tiny little zigzag. So it looks like a nice straight tailoring seam. And when I sew, I'm just gonna be following along the basic shape of this fly so it has that little hook to it. Now I can take both of my front pieces and lay them right sides together. That means that fuzzy velvet side together. So I'm looking at the shiny back side of the velvet. I'm just gonna line those two pieces up next to each other, pin them really carefully. Velvet likes to slide back and forth on itself when I'm sewing. So I'm gonna pin it really, really carefully, really securely. And then we're gonna go over to my serger machine again, and we're gonna run a serging stitch down that curved front seam of the pants. And that's gonna include the little faux fly that we put in there in the beginning just a moment ago. Now if we open this up, there's the front of the pants. You can see the little seam on that faux fly. It looks really nice, really professional. That whole front is done pretty simple, but it creates a really nice tailored effect to these pants. Now we can set that front aside and we can move on to the back of these pants. So we're gonna do the same thing, we just don't have that extra step of the little faux fly. So we're gonna sew that back seam. Let's take all of these pins out. Once again, we're gonna put them right sides together. So that's fuzzy side, that velvety side together, looking at the shiny underside. So we're gonna pin that really, really securely so that when I take it to the machine, they don't try and slide across each other as I'm sewing. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take it back to my serger and we're gonna serge up the back seam. Okay, so we have a completed back of our pants and a completed front of our pants. At this point, I'm just gonna double check my measurements against the measurements that I got from Paolo so that I'm not accidentally making them too big or too small. This is a great time to double check those measurements. Since I'm confident with the sizing, we're gonna go ahead and sew up the side seams of these pants. So we are gonna set them, again, right sides together, fuzzy sides together, the front and the back, and we're gonna pin all the way up both the outside of the pant seam and the inner pant seam. So that down the side of the hip and up the inside. And of course, I'm really careful with that center seam so that the center front of the pants and the center back of the pants match up perfectly underneath the legs. Once we're done pinning, we're gonna head back to my serger. And I'm gonna go ahead and do all of those seams. So both of these seams on the outer leg and that one long seam that goes from the inside all the way up one leg and all the way down the other leg. Once those seams are done, we have a almost complete pair of pants. So next thing we're gonna do is work on the hem of these pants. I've already run a quick serger seam around the hem so that they don't ravel while they're being worn. I'm gonna go ahead and measure up a one inch fold here and we're going to pin that down around both legs. Then we can go back to my tailoring machine. We're gonna go back to that lightning stitch I used earlier. It looks like a straight stitch, but is still stretchy. And we're gonna go ahead and stitch our, both of those cuffs down. Looks really, really nice that way. Nice, clean, tailored finish. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is add a little stirrup strap to the bottom of the pants so that when the skater is wearing them, they're hooked on and they stay really tight and professional around the skate and they're not flopping around. So we're gonna measure out a couple of strips of elastic that is gonna provide enough space to hook them underneath. This is gonna change depending on the skater and how long their pants are and how big their feet are, but um, you're gonna want four of them, one for each side of the pants. So then we're gonna go back to my tailoring machine and I'm just gonna attach each piece of elastic next to one of the seams. So I have the little side seam here. I'm laying the piece of elastic down on top of it and I'm gonna lightning stitch it to the pants. So we're gonna do that four times so that each leg has two little pieces of elastic. I'm gonna go ahead and clean all the little threads up and then it's time to stitch on our giant snaps. 
So this is a hand sewing job. So I'm just gonna put one snap on the bottom of each of these stirrups. These are really big, so it doesn't take more than one snap for each pant leg. So once I've stitched those snaps on, our pant legs are completed and they are ready to be worn and skated in. Now we need to tackle the waistband at the top. This is where that big two inch elastic comes into play. So I'm measuring this out the size of Paolo's waist, plus just enough overlap so that I can cross the elastic together and stitch it down. I'm gonna take this elastic to my tailoring machine and run a zigzag stitch to hold it down and we're gonna do a couple of laps of that so it really does not come apart. The last thing we want is for our elastic to pop apart while being worn. And then I'm gonna go back to my black stretch velvet fabric and I'm gonna cut a waistband that matches the size of the top of the pant. So this is just slightly larger than the elastic. The elastic is cut just a tiny bit smaller than the actual hip size, so that it kind of stays snug onto the body. And then we're gonna take the two ends of the pants and sew them together, the short ends, so that we can create a loop. We're gonna go back to our serger and stitch a nice secure serging stitch across the back of that waistband. So now we have a complete loop of velvet that should be double the width of the elastic plus a seam allowance and the same length around as the black velvet pants. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pin one side, velvet sides together onto the pants. We're then gonna insert the elastic and fold the velvet over the elastic and re-pin it. So the elastic is now sandwiched between the velvet and pinned onto the pants. Let's look at this carefully. If I open it up, you can see the inside with the pants seam. So that's the pants we're looking at. And now we have on the outside, we see the waistband and stuck right in between is the elastic. So it's a little bit of a velvet and elastic sandwich. Now we're gonna go back to that serger and do one final seam. We're gonna sew that sandwich all together so that we have three layers of velvet and one layer of elastic. And with that, our pants are done. I'm very happy with how these turned out. I can't wait to have Paolo try them on, make sure that they fit correctly, but I'm really confident with my measurements. I think that these pants are gonna work really, really well for him. The stirrup makes them so nice and secure. These pants are ready to go. And now I can just set those aside and really worry about all of the details that we have going on in the top of this amazing skating costume. So tomorrow I will be tackling the tunic portion, this top portion of our skating costume. Make sure you come back tomorrow so you can check out that process. You are not going to want to miss it. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please do give us that thumbs up. And as always, I look forward to reading all your comments in that section down below. If you haven't done so yet, then hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell down in the corner so you can see all my videos when they come out. Happy skating, and I'll see you next time.